so bad, Jay. What's up, man? Sorting out the Facebooks. Hello, can you guys hear me? I'm sure you guys could hear Mike for a second. <laughs> <laughs> How's the audio with the music and then with Mike? Mike, say something. I'm trying something Same a little different. <laughs> trying something a little different. Yeah, because uh, before I had the computer. Huh? What the? I'm saying stuff. That's all. Draw me, draw me getting stabbed? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's traumatic. <laughs> yeah, my friend, I, I think I told you, he I had a friend who got like just, he was walking and then someone just walked up to him and started stabbing him. Yeah, that's insane. Yep. All right. I think we're good. Here, let me uh, let me make sure I don't have anything of controversy on my Facebook or on my Facebook YouTube. Audio is perfect. All right, great. Yeah, because I'm trying um, to use the because I couldn't hear I couldn't hear music before because because <laughs> I had on like computer audio, but then so I had to turn it off so I couldn't hear my audio. So anyway. All right, I think we're good here. Let me just go ahead and remove the image. Are you on Facebook, Mike? Yeah, I got it. Uh, I got it pulled up. Yeah, because I can't see the chat there. I can only I can see the chat on uh, Twitch and YouTube though. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. So what's up, friends? So I think I've decided that I'm going to try to stream at least like once every day. Even if it's like only for like 30 minutes. Um, and with these streams, I'm going to just like talk and hang out and, and practice stuff that I haven't practiced in a long time. Oh. But you guys are welcome to uh, basically uh, ask questions of any kind. Yeah, I, uh, I've been testing out the uh, AdSense and ad revenue monetization with Face or not Facebook, YouTube. And I got four dollars, y'all. Heck yeah! Hi, let's get some hype in the chat. <laughs> yeah, which which is a good sign, which means that uh, this is definitely a viable solution. So, um, to basically create free education, I mean, aside from the fact that you have to watch like a minute of advertising, um, but that means that I might start doing my tutorials and I might start doing them just on YouTube, just to be there for free. <coughs> like I, you should. Uh... I was gonna say you should do a test, do yeah. a do a, do a video like you would do for your Gumroad, and then release it on YouTube. Yeah. And promote it. See how many views you get. Yeah, I think so. so uh, I think idea. my older ones will still be available and be for sale, but at, at some point they'll be old enough and uh, potentially create a viable um, income from this that I can just probably make them all free and just upload them uh in the distant distant future but we'll see uh yeah that's I, not a bad idea. yeah i'm uh and it would have to be the distant future because right. uh, i know there's a lot of people who have purchased those videos a long time ago and i want them to have some value right right we actually <clears throat> we actually recently expanded uh we're to cube brush so if any of you guys are cube brush fans you can go find raw pencil tutorials up there Oops. Are, are we drawing some alien nudes today? <laughs> uh, and I'm doing good. Dibajar. Dibajar. And in Caveman Dungeon. Working on a crazy project. Hey! Great. Hello, sirs. Your wife is not going past by. I mean, in the back. Oh, yeah, I have my camera on. No, she should be alright. Um, but my uh, son's in here, he's playing Xbox, so if he, like, pops in, that's something you'll might see. What's going on in the Facebook chat? Uh, so far I don't see anything. Just chatter? What's everyone yeah. saying? <coughs> don't, mind me, don't mind filling in, me in. I'm actually going to go and look at some st arts. It's not the one I was looking at. I can't tell. Can somebody, if you're watching on Facebook, can somebody comment something? Because I can't tell if uh, 
they changed if the new comments are at the top and the bottom now. Just to help me out. Oh, they're at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, but, Thank uh, you. dude, there's so much. <laughs> In the last few days, there's so much drama. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you might you might not be attentive to it, which is fine. <laughs> Are you talking, you're talking about politics? Just all sorts of stuff, man, everything. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. I, I was really bothered with the Elon Musk story. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. I'm just like, why? Why do people. People just like to be mad. Getting so mad at everything. I was in a, a debate with one of my good friends, uh, Antim, uh, on one mm -hmm. of his Facebook posts. And, you know, I was just making a point that, like, people need to freaking start coming down, you know, because there are some real issues, and those issues seem to just, like, immediately be overdrawn or over, like, seen uh, with the next big drama. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, real issues are just being kind of like you know hidden amongst that and then like the 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 bigger issues sometimes what ends up happening um they start to lose their uh you know validity because people are are then now comparing this new drama with this other drama right so yeah like not to get not to point to any specific situation because i really don't want to get too much into it because i've really had enough this week <laughs> of uh, being a social justice warrior keyboard junkie fighting for the the interwebs awards the betterment. Of, yeah the internet awards of trolling um it's like if like let's say and this is just some abstract problem i'm making okay mm -hmm. so that way we unless someone's like what i feel strongly about that abstract problem that you just made up hypothetically um it's like if, like, let's say strawberries um, are are always like red strawberries that have a little bit of like yellow on them. Don't get picked. I'm just again, this is not supposed to be parallel to anything. I'm just trying to make some circumstances. And then, and then, let's say this is a real issue because those strawberries are just as ripe as all the other strawberries. And those strawberries are now, you know, whatever, um, being, you know, neglected. And so we all agree that there might be an issue there. Well, we need to get, pick all those strawberries, right? So then when the strawberries start to get attention that they need, those ones with yellow spots, there will be other strawberries that will make a case that, um, like, let's say a, a perfectly good yellow marked strawberry Again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a strawberry. Um, you know, just doesn't get picked. Not because of any other reason. Maybe someone just forgot to pick it up. And it starts screaming, see? And it's like, no, 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 we were about to pick you. We just, we just had to go wash our hands real fast. It's like, no, you weren't. You're a bunch of liars. You see what I'm saying? Like, and then it starts making the whole situation like, oh, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe this abstract situation. <laughs> it might actually be really goofy the way that I'm explaining it. So I'm like, hey. to, be, to be honest, I'm not following. Yeah, I, I, I almost, trying. I lost myself as I was explaining <laughs> You started it. thinking about strawberries. <laughs> I was like, actually, I want to eat some strawberries right now. <laughs> like, My no, point no. is, is like, like someone will take a real issue and then, and then explode it to uh, a circumstance that has nothing to do with the issue. Right, and the strawberry analogy or stories had nothing. It was another, it was a terrible yeah. example. I just don't you're want to get like, into it. Are you talking like false equivalencies? Yeah, that's that's probably a better way of explaining it. Or it's just like just the term. But it's basically, yeah, making things I, I see this a lot. People are hiding behind some real issues as part of what's wrong with them and potentially their insecurities, right? And then and then basically um, making it that issue when it had nothing to do with that issue. Right, I made it. I made a point to my friend, for instance, is like we were arguing, right? And um, if I felt like I was losing the debate, right, and and instead of just conceding that maybe I lost and I don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe maybe I just need to take a moment to think about a better and stronger rebuttal, you know, because maybe intuitively I think that there's some truth to what I'm saying, 
but I just don't have the answer at the moment. Uh, and then, like in the middle of the argument, if I were to say, "Well, you don't get it because you're not you're not Black Korean," <laughs> does that make sense? It's like yes. yeah, like yeah, using yeah, using something that is c completely and almost utterly unique to me, and like th there's obviously nothing that Morrison person could Melody say. Yeah, there's nothing that they could say that could potentially come back to that specific comment. And every time they try to point out that hey, that's irrelevant, I'm like, why are you trying to invalidate my relevance? <laughs> you know, and I just keep doubling down on this this idea, and it just it makes me upset. And, uh, and like with the Elon Musk thing, for instance, that's a great example, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's like, hey man, like uh, you know, if you guys need some help, because people are asking him, like, hey, maybe you guys, you could do something to help these kids in the what was it Thailand, right? Yeah, they were stuck in this so. cave, and he's like, okay, sure, let me see what I can do. And he got like his engineers, and they're thinking about building like a little submarine, right? And they're testing it out, and they're like, yeah, it looks like it works. You know, maybe you guys can send it. And, and I guess the way that it seemed, because he was kind of like, like kind of marketing and kind of like, uh, just showing off how badass his tech is. People felt like that was exploiting this, these kids, right? Or this whole situation. When in reality, people were asking him for some assistance and, and I mean, I honestly don't think he would have intervened unless someone said something, right? And, yeah. and not to say that he doesn't, wouldn't want to help, probably, it just probably doesn't cross his mind that maybe he had some tools that could help out, right? But then, uh, you know, it's just, it's just not, it can't be that simple. It can't be like he just wanted to help, <laughs> right? It has to be some crazy conspiracy or some sort of crazy agenda. You know, normally people associate this with, with just like the, the people who lean a little to the right or conspiracy theorists. They don't imagine that they themselves could be people who are creating false narratives, you know, um, because it's easy. It's really easy to do stuff like that, like come up with like these false stories and realities and these theories, right? Uh, I was talking to my friend about like uh, conspiracy theories, you know, we were just like, he's like, oh, I just don't get like how people believe some of these stuff, right? And it's like, anybody can do it. You know, anybody can fall for this stuff, right? It's just yeah. some some people tend to not fall for it as easily as others, but everyone falls for something, right? And I was like, for instance, um, like watch like this really good video about how Jar Jar Binks is a Sith Lord, <laughs> right? Like, I'm sure you've heard of this, <laughs> okay? Me? No, dude. Yeah, you should look into it. It's really great. It's oh, not oh, true. It's, it's not true. Like, a Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's not true. Like, George Lucas wasn't, like, secretly trying to make <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar Binks a Sith Lord. But yeah. it's just, like, some... They, like, people nitpick all the little stuff in yeah, yeah. in the Star Wars franchise. And then they have enough to give us, like, a really strong hypothesis that that he is a Sith Lord. But the, the, the reality is, no, not at all, man. You know? Um... And and there's all kinds of like I'm sure you've seen plenty of like fan theories. We were talking about this before, right? There's yeah, like this. I watch, uh, I watch theory stuff. Yeah, you, like, uh, game theorists is a good. Yeah, example. Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. Or film theorists, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing. The same dude, Matt Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like and, that guy. Yeah, and so because it, it's fun, and there's, there's, it's just mm -hmm. like making fun of like. But some people truly believe these types of things, right? Fan right. theories. <clears throat> and and so going back to like this. Elon Musk stuff, or even like the strawberry analogy, <laughs> like people tend to just create a lot of this like hoopla around every little thing, and it, and and the reason why it's a little bit different than maybe in the past is because everyone has a megaphone, right? So everyone's voice is equally heard in some of these instances, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're equally valued. And I'm not trying right. to say that people can't talk and that if you talk that your voice is better than one voice or worse than other person's voice but it's just the merits can be questioned right if someone came up to me anybody can walk up to me and tell me that donuts are made from sawdust right like they can tell me that <laughs> it doesn't mean that i can be i have to believe it you know they would have to present some really strong evidence and if they did uh, you know okay and then i'd still you know be skeptical because sawdust would most certainly murder you 
if you kept on ingesting it. And so there would be more questions I would have than answers, right? And so, and so like, this is what's happening, man. Like, people uh, are falling for, like, all of these things too often, man. And they're not able to just, like, say, well, yeah, maybe, <coughs> maybe that person just meant this thing. Something that we used to kind of just, you know, believe to be true because it was most likely true in the past, you know? But now everything has to have some sort of weird agenda to it. And it's like, no, some things do for sure, but not all things, right? Like, I, I like seeing, like, how people sometimes may think that uh, Trump, for instance, might be, like, some sort of evil genius. No, I don't, I don't think so. And I think we talked about this before. I think he's just, you know, he's just not a smart individual. He's just really old, and he has effluenza. And he, he has a lot of insecurities, so he just kind of panders to the last person in the room. Yep. You know? And he holds strong opinions based off of the people that he talks to often. Because uh, before his presidency, he was actually liberal. Right. right. But yeah. that's because he hung out with that's celebrities. He's surrounded, with. Yeah, yeah. he's surrounded by celebrities, and celebrities tend to be more liberal. You know? Well, extremely. And people were saying, it's funny, sir, because people were like, you're going to see my wife? I was like, no, she won't walk in. <laughs> so they can see you. Well, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I put the little sign on there. Yeah, what is this, Peter? Okay. Oh, I told him good night before I came in here. All right. <laughs> All right, what do some people say? Your wife is not going to go past by. Well, she just did. I would say to definitely work on your tag and video title game to help your search results. I agree with that. I think there's some truth to uh, getting people to find my stuff. I think uh, when I do the tutorial, I was just thinking just that. I think tutorials would be the best place to do that. Because I don't know what I'm going to talk about in these streams, you know? And typically, like, uh, people who do, like, podcasts or uh, vlogs, they'll just, like, they'll, they'll chop it up later, and then they'll make it into clips, and then they will name those clips um, Yeah, look at accordingly. HD, HD. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I've seen with uh, most other people do, but I don't mm -hmm. I don't have like a structure to the actual stream, <coughs> so I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. But uh, in terms of like a tutorial, yeah, absolutely, I can totally like, be a little bit more stream. Yeah, I know this is under gaming on Facebook, for instance, but I, I have no control over that. Yeah, and it's just the the way Facebook's broke down their streaming right now. They yeah. they're heavily invested into gaming right now. Yeah. Same with uh, same with Mixer. I, I heard that Mixer is paying uh, Twitch streamers to switch over. From t uh, yeah, from, sw from Twitch. Hey. I guess that's one way to grow your platform. Common um, Rider designs <laughs> are dope AF. The Japanese ones. You love your stuff, by the way. Thank you. Happy to hear you're going to be doing more on YouTube. Look, creature Fortnite. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? Thanks for sh uh, for share, Anthony, but I put the videos and I heard you talk about strawberries. What is the deal with the strawberries? <laughs> what is going on? Anthony is transforming into a farmer. Uh, uh, I feel so lost. Yeah, don't worry. We all felt lost. But Jar Jar is the key to all this. Uh, tell the Central Park 5 that. <laughs> What's the t Central Park 5? I don't know what that is. <coughs> I don't know what that's referring to. I got some Facebook stuff for you. All right, cool. So we got Seth Good Times telling you that he'll be in LA in September if you want to hang out and hug. Yeah, man. Just tell me <laughs> where to to hug you so I don't accidentally hug your stab wounds. Cool. Um, okay, and then Jan <laughs> Jump here. By the way, sorry if I butcher your guys' names. Um, says new Procreate 4.1 update is neat isn't it yeah it's great uh, i've already yeah. loved procreate but uh, I, I need to, to get back into it more but uh, i love it even more now because it has tools that are really really great <coughs> to have uh, especially when it comes to like texture manipulating it's really good uh, i think that's it on facebook that's fine yeah you also mixer doesn't have an exclusivity clause like twitch does for partners uh, that's right yeah 
What once you get partnered on Twitch, yeah, once you get partnered on Twitch, you, you're you exclusive. Like, you have to stay on Twitch. Not how you can use Restream. Uh, they don't allow that. That's weird. Yeah. I'm trying to make that money, dude. That's why. I'm trying to diversify, baby. But how's the partnerships work? Is it a good deal? Uh, I don't know too much. I don't know if, it, if that specific uh, part of Twitch is tied to, like, a higher-end partnership, but, like... I, I don't know. I don't know if that if that means if you get a sub button, then you have to stay on Twitch or not. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I know think the, that's I know the big streamers can do that. Yeah. I mean, like, it might uh, be right. It might be good now, but like eventually they're gonna have to cave. You so. know, uh, based on what we were saying earlier, earlier conversations we've had on these streams, I'm curious as to why uh, negativity and like just anger gets like the most views on the internet. Oh, it's like, drama, what, what is, dude. It's simple. I was it's gonna drama. say, what, yeah, it was like, what is it about us humans that like conflict that much? Um, I, I think I watched a video on this and it's okay. like, it's a survival thing, right? Right, like, um, like, our brain at some level loves to learn, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it needs to learn. Now, <coughs> it, it, it doesn't like to learn the hard way, meaning like it doesn't like to learn by it happening to you. For instance, putting, let's say going down a hill on a BMX bike and then crashing like real aggressively and breaking your collarbone or something crazy, right? Like your body would prefer you didn't do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. But if you saw a BMX bike, like rider fall on his bike and tumble down, like, you know, um, your brain it watches that and it's like, whoa, what's going on? Oh, well, that's not us. And then you laugh because especially if it's like really not too tragic um, or if it's like um, bad enough that, you know, that they came out of it alive, but it was so bad that like, you know, that they're, they're not going to walk straight for like a week, <laughs> you know? And you'll laugh because uh, laughter is another sign of just like, um, like your body has learned something really valuable and then it makes, and it, and it might even see the irony of whatever's happening and it'll make you laugh, right? Like, so for instance, if you see somebody like dancing, like if you saw, saw like an overset person <coughs> dancing on like a small table, right? Like you kind of know what's going to happen and then when it happens like the irony of like what what did this person think that they could dance on such a small platform like of course this was going to happen you know and uh it makes us laugh it's like the the same thing with comment uh comedy right comedians do this all the time well they'll find like something that's true you know and then they'll they'll especially the good ones they'll find like the real irony of it and then they'll like exploit that irony and it's hilarious and so then when you hear like a lot of this negativity and drama what you're you're end up like what you're ending up seeing is a lot of this like you're seeing what people are saying and then and then there's another facet of it i think which is that um so for instance like this will happen like if you have a belief system that will be challenged then your brain won't like seeing stuff like this does this make sense like let's say you believe in strawberries <laughs> but strawberries should be red okay and then someone comes out and says no strawberries are always green and always will be green and then they go into like conspiracy theories about why the government has tricked us to believe that strawberries are red they're actually green right strawberries are manufactured man <laughs> and so then and so then now you get furious because your brain has like put a lot of time and effort to believe in this one thing, right? So then you seek out people who will defend your position. So that's another reason, right? That people, um, what you call it, fall into this trap. And I think why people tend to watch, like, so basically like you'll see a video that has like millions and millions of likes. And sometimes people think, okay, like let's say like uh, with the separating families things, you know, universally most people think that was pretty bad, right? But there will be like yeah. one person on YouTube that says, no, nah, it was dope. Like we should totally separate families. F them. You know? And so there'll be a lot of people that'll 
can't believe that this is being said and more importantly they can't believe that a lot of people are watching this and then, let's say liking it right and the the reality is like a lot of times people are watching this who like this are still in the minority they just happen to collect on that one youtuber or that one facebook or twitch stream or whatever the case may be you know and so it's kind of this false sense of like oh this person has a lot of relevance um, like for instance, like if you look at like the the Paul brothers, like they have a lot of followers, but a lot of their followers are young kids, right? So it doesn't necessarily uh, warrant that they have good content, because you know kids like all kinds of stuff, and not everything <clears> they, they like. Trends and they're yeah, yeah, not all the things that they like are, are any good. I mean, if you try to remember what you liked as a kid, you'd probably be like, yeah, that's that's kind of stupid, right? Uh, not all things, but most things, right? <clears throat> like for instance today my daughter was like because we, we made our daughter watch uh youtube for a little bit uh yeah. for like the last week because we've been really busy and it helps us like kind of get our life in order but i already told my wife like we gotta monitor again it's like it, they're only on there for like two days and they're already like cultured with a lot of like stuff i don't want them to be cultured in <laughs> oh dang but that's my point this is that you know like you have this these few issues or you have these few things happening. One, people like to watch things that create drama because there's a lesson to be learned there, right? It doesn't necessarily mean they like it. For instance, Trump has a lot of followers. It doesn't mean they all like him. Many people follow him because that, they yeah, just want to know. They want to know what the hell he's up to, right? And so, but then there's also the people who genuinely do enjoy the following of the whatever, but it's usually to supply their echo chamber, right? And I realize this myself. I stopped listening to... Uh, only left-leaning media because that's all I was listening to before and then I saw a debate uh, between a, a left-leaning person and a right-leaning person and the right-leaning person made arguments that I didn't disagree with and it made me reconsider that maybe I was only listening to too much of the left but I was just so furious that's probably why I was just so blinded but but so then what ends up happening is that nobody's willing to listen to each other because they can go online and find somebody that agrees with them and says exactly all the right things, you know? Yeah. And ignores the reality of it. And so this is why this has become very popular. And I think there's going to be a time where this is going to be like, we're, we're like the way I'm looking at all this is that we're all in like a transition with all of this garbage that I see right now, you know? Like, we're in a transition. Like, this has never happened before, right? Like, people have always had their their echo chambers, but it's never been so amplified, you know? And there hasn't been so much opportunity for everyone to rebut everybody else's points, right? And so, like, I was even thinking, like, there needs to be some sort of, like, new app or social platform that opens the doors for people to argue with one another, but, like, have some sort of, like, Yelp rating, meaning, like, basically civility rating like so that if you argue and you're you can come off civil right then you get civil points and that means people take your words a little bit more they basically you have a little more merit to what you're saying versus just you talking to a camera to other people who want to listen to what you have to say like it would be better if there was more debates and a way to reward good debaters you know and yeah. and people who can actually have strong points that could be heard i feel like the problem with that idea is that I feel like the people that we're talking about in this scenario aren't necessarily people that seek out that kind of conflict or conversation. It just, it's all fueled by emotion in the moment. And th that's why it's so prevalent is because, you know, that's why they call it like Twitter fingers, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so accessible. You just pull it up and you, you open it and throw it out there. And yeah, I mean, an app can do the same thing that was directed at that kind of thing. I'm just, I'm personally doubtful that that sort of thing would be used. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to you? I don't uh, think people. I, I think it would be. These things out. I think well, it would I, be because uh, on okay, YouTube well, I, there's a on, lot well, of. I would I would argue oh that you. I, no, I'm just saying, man. I know you. I would argue that you're a unique case. Not a lot of people are like you, where they like to have these kind of debates and discuss these things. It's very rare to meet somebody like that. I think. All right, that's all. Most people aren't as open to dialogue and conversation and having these kind of debates like you. No, I, you know? I think most people are like that. It's just the okay. problem right now is that there is no, there's no um, accountability. 
And so people are falling further and further into these echo chambers. That's my, that's the problem, right? Like, I think that like three or four years ago, most mm -hmm. of the stuff that people are arguing about now, even if you go like maybe another year, like four or five years ago, uh, weren't arguments. Do you understand? But because like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, all these things just amp have been amplifying and amplifying and be creating megaphones for all of these people, you know, and then people would argue with their friends and then they would argue with them in a context where they don't see each other's faces. Does this make sense? Yeah. And then they will just, they start pushing themselves away, right? Because there's some friends of mine that I've known for a long time that, um, they're holding these super strong positions all of a sudden, <laughs> right? Where I feel like years ago, this wouldn't have been the case, you know? And it's just because people are, are talking about it more and more. And now they're sharing like their favorite, you know, YouTuber who says they're all the right stuff at the right pace. You know what I mean? And, and it's starting to get a little out of control. And I think, uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. So I think people do okay. want to have like a platform where they can see because like the whole fake news thing is a real thing. Most people don't trust the news, you know, they don't think right. it's this like true. And so if you had like an opportunity for people to like challenge each other's ideas in a forum where they could be accountable, you know, for instance, like, um, like Reddit has a really good system where I was you, about to mention Reddit. Yeah. Like if you say some stuff, it get, you can either be upvoted or downvoted, right? Mm -hmm. Like creating a system like that. But I, I'm saying like a snapchat or like a stream like dedicated to these Kind of like it, it's it's like imagine like um i go online and i just say i hold this position on whatever topic like abortion right i say i have this it's kind of like a matchmaking i i am a pro choice or i'm a pro life right and then you bam you, you match with this other person and then you guys argue or debate and it could be streamed so other people can join in and join in the single layer chat and then uh, you basically would monitor pe pe uh, people's behaviors, and so that way, and people want to change my mind. At <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. even though like uh, <laughs> Stephen Crowder, someone who I strongly disagree with on everything, yeah. that's actually a really good thing that he did. I even I keep messaging him and on oh, yeah? his YouTube and his Facebook channel. Yeah, I'm like, you gotta like let people know where you're gonna debate these things, so I can go and debate you, like. You can't oh, just expect great. like random people <laughs> just to know everything. You should tr truly challenge yourself and debate people who are like on the frontier. Or prepared. Yeah, who are who have strong. Oh my god, I'm so glad you see that because that was my biggest problem with watching that content. Is it's it's such a great idea, but I think it's a little too one-sided because you. Well, it's come deliberately prepared. one. It's deliberately one-sided. He I, does yeah, it. He does yeah. it so he knows that not everybody is that knowledgeable of these things, yeah. and he kind of he kind of sets it up in a situation where he makes people feel like they don't, they don't might they may not have all the answers right and he said you should reconsider your position which is a good thing to do but it might be good for him to actually uh, challenge the wits and that, that'd be cool if there's a rating system in which you can monitor who has the stronger arguments and who's been challenging you know because because then you can really have some real like opportunity for people to kind of hear a strong case for either or right and right. and the people who are debating uh if they want to have any merit on the website they can't you know obviously just start talking shit or making fun of them right because that would ruin their rating and uh ruin their their ability to debate civilly 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 yeah that's right <laughs> all right and so it doesn't it just didn't sound right but that's like that's what I'm thinking. Like going back to kind of your your original kind of question comment, like I would, I'd say I'm still skeptical, but I now I see better your argument. Yeah, I, I yeah, don't I, have as much faith in people as you do. Maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, if it really was bad as it would it seemed, like the, we would see mm -hmm. it way way more often, like in our life. Um, but we we only see it often on our phones. It's it's not reality. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. let me give you a good example, like with the, uh, with gun violence, right? I'm totally, uh, for like some real strong gun reform, right? Um, I think the amount of mass shootings that we have in the United States is pretty bad. We need to get something under control, whether it's 
uh, stronger gun laws and as well as stronger the majority you know, of democrats and republicans agree with you yeah okay see this this is my point right so i think yeah. most people do agree with this but then if you are on the conservative end they will bring up example uh, after example and even on the left they will bring up example after example right and if you look at the numbers right it's it's not enough that we would unanimously all be like yes we need a change like today right but it is enough that it has an uh, uh, but it's not so little that gun um pro gun people say oh there's nothing wrong right guns are totally not a problem you know it's like right in like a really gray area that this which makes it a very hard debate you know yeah, yeah. because if like for instance if millions of people were, were dying uh every year from like guns and gun violence in a way where it was like clearly not like uh, gang activity or anything, but just because of just some kids going crazy and start shooting up schools, right? If millions of people, were, if that was happening in millions, uh, it would be a much different debate, right? Uh, and if it was only happening in like a, a couple dozen in a year, again, it would be a completely different debate, right? Uh, I have some I want to add to that. It also, depending on who the victims are, yes, it would be a different debate. Yes, so if exactly. You were, if they were the um, the elites or the politicians or whoever that actually holds, you know, the real power are being targeted, which I'm not saying or advocating that should happen. You know, yeah. just saying that that would change. Yeah. Disclaimer. Not yeah, I get it. saying that that's what should happen. <laughs> Straw a point. <laughs> My yeah. mom would say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it on your mom, dude. You're I'll the problem. See? <laughs> You're the problem. Um, no, I get it. That's my point. Yeah. Right. And, and so for instance, there was like, um, a, a video of like that, that white dude that was telling, like screaming at the, the lady from Puerto Rico. Right. Yeah. It's like pretty, pretty straightforward. It's pretty bad. It's nothing, uh, there's nothing to debate there. Okay. Right. But what a, what a conservative would say is say like, you know, they'll go off the, the, the fritz of like, that's a, an outlier that doesn't happen a lot. And it's, that would be accurate. It doesn't happen as often as people would uh, like to admit. But it does happen. And it is a problem. And so that's why you have you see people on the left try to debate like on focusing on just strong outlier type situations as like we need like huge reforms. And then you have conservatives who are like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. And it goes both ways. That's what I'm my point is, you know? And so people aren't being honest. They're not being intellectually honest, right? It's, it's a matter of like, okay, we don't tolerate this. So is there a way that we can create laws or some system that could prevent this like poor lady from being harassed, right? In a very meaningful way, uh, but at the same time, make people who are, let's say, on the opposition uh, find some agreement, some common ground, you know? And... And like what ends up happening is just a lot of just like teeter tottering. Like my my friend said it to me best. Like you know he said like a lot of these policies sometimes because there's so much bipartisan divide, are just band aids, you know. Like this whole immigration thing, is just a thing that just got spiraled out of control, for years. It's just been slowly getting worse, and worse and worse because we haven't been putting a really good fix to it. We've been only putting a band aid, on it, you know. And it's just gotten yeah. so bad that um, Trump just enforced the law. And this is true. Like, people won't admit it, but this is true. Is this is what a law that was instated long ago that there's like, we need to be a little bit more strict with people who are crossing our southern border. They're not willing to, you know, admit that this was not Trump exactly, but that it is true that he created a zero policy thing that basically just amplified it right made it much worse and people on the right won't admit to that either and this, this is the problem dude like nobody's willing to like look at the problem for what it is you know people are just sticking to their agenda and nothing's getting fixed just a bunch of people yelling at each other right and you so know, and i saw i think there needs yeah. to be a platform where people can like have honest debates and actually have accountability like actually like debate people um who have similar, if not just as a strong a case 
and then let let people start to decide from that versus just watching and listening to their echo chambers because they're only gonna like there's a very clear pattern like you have to understand right like if you're a conservative it's almost likely that you're a christian that you're pro-life um that you're for guns that you are for strong super strong borders and immigration right like it's like it's like out of like a, a like some sort of playbook you know and if you're uh, uh liberal like then you're uh, all about oh you're most likely not christian you're most likely pro-choice you're uh, behind minorities you know you see what i'm saying like you go through it's like it's like a checklist and i'm like wait a minute why is it so <laughs> Why is it so uh, black and white. perfect? Yeah, like why is it so perfectly black and white? And because I don't feel that way. There's some things that are on exactly. the right that I think make sense to me, and there's some things on the left that make sense to me. I Same lean here. more to the left, but but I don't feel that everything that a conservative says is has to be wrong because they're conservative, and that is I think needs to change. Because and vice versa, like I see a lot of conservatives like just immediately write off liberals. And it's just like this weird thing, man. I don't know. It's it's the it's the other, right? Yeah. It just it stems down to the other. And one of the things that I don't want to or I want to bring back up is you're talking about these echo chambers. And there's actually I don't know if you saw the news. I assume you did about YouTube's investing 25 million into their news networks. I don't necessarily think it's a great a great thing, but I see why they're doing it, and I see that maybe YouTube feels a little bit of the responsibility for that echo chamber. And there's a good argument to be said about why it is part of the responsibility. Yeah. And it's uh, it's the YouTube algorithm plays to that. It makes it so that when you uh, watch a certain kind of content, YouTube prefers to keep you on the platform. So it'll show you another video related. So that's how you end up going down those rabbit holes is you're curious and you say, you know, you know you look up is the earth flat for example and then you you click on whatever the top trending video whatever the algorithm thinks that let's show them this one this one has good you know ratings and then you watch that and maybe you get a little convinced and then you're like oh okay interesting and you were going to click away but then after the video is over you know video on the bottom right has a clickbaity thumbnail that you know says another thing either about yeah. you know flat earth or that a lot oh, of people yeah, click we, to next and it just keeps going and going. Yeah, we man. talked about this before. This is exactly right. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it, mm. I think, I think, you know, we're just, I don't know, I guess we're being manipulated in a way, but we're also letting it happen. You know, uh, we're, we're not being deliberately manipulated. Uh, I think mainstream media might have done that in the past, but they, they're starting to learn they can't do that if they want to create viewership. Uh, I think they're still I doing mean, it pretty I, strong. Manipulation I'm talking about is, is the algorithm. I don't, that's where I would agree, not deliberately. I'm talking about yeah, YouTube it's indirect. Yeah. Right? Like they're, exactly. they're just thinking, how do we get more views? They're not thinking, how do we make people more conservative or liberal? Ex exactly. Exactly. Like people, I, I saw the argument once people were saying like, you know, YouTube's or Facebook's really liberal and it's like censoring mm -hmm. uh, right wing talking points. And I'm like, that's incredibly false because uh, Donald Trump got elected as president, you know? It's actually yeah. the opposite. What ended up happening was that people who were um, who have only access to Facebook as their news outlet, right, uh, were listening to other conservative talking points, and they're like, "Yeah, that does make sense." You know, they ha there was no opportunity to listen to the other side as much as you people like would like to believe it was happening. What they do is instead they're saying uh, that because Facebook is a liberal company, because they are right, they're mostly left leaning. Um, they're censoring uh, conservatives. No, they're censoring everybody. Uh, and people aren't realizing that uh, when all this censoring started happening is actually after the fact that they realized that there was a potential like threshold that was being uh, unleashed onto the pu public that was in, like enhancing what they were listening to and what they were uh, viewing. And same thing with the, what you call it, same thing with um, YouTube, right? Yeah. Anyway, it's it's all it's all a mess, and I'm like, it's even a rabbit hole to talk about. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I, I I was tired this 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 whole week. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna take a break from from arguing with people. Um, yeah. But I, I was arguing with some people, and then some people were willing to to talk with me offline, 
Well, still mm-hmm. online, but off of like social media, like chat. And those like conversations private. go way, yeah, those conversations go way better. Because, because yeah. like it's you can hear each when what? it's one on one. Who is this? Yeah. Get that out of here. We, <laughs> o- we only allow the blacks in this one. Don't you Whoa. know? Identity politics, man. Whoa. Get out of here, man. Holy shit. I think, uh, I think half of us <laughs> Yeah, us yeah. together makes one one black. Yeah. So that's all. Aren't I'm you like half Korean? I yeah, am. Exactly. And that yeah, Korean side, if I could remove him from this conversation, I would, but I can't. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm, just you get no, I'm just kidding. What 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 were you gonna say, when? Uh I was gonna say like uh when you do like a sort of a one on one with somebody, uh they're more likely to listen than like a social media platform when they're being bombarded with so much they're just trying to like one point at a time right they're trying to like defend one thing and then and the problem is that people also read between the lines i saw like a really funny meme that kind of made fun of this point like someone was like it was like a text between two people one person texted it's like how you or it's like um uh, are you going to go out tonight or are you going to, or something like they just asked them a yes or no question. I forget what the question was. And then the person just said, yes, that's it. That's all they wrote. There's like no exclamation mark or a period or nothing. Just yes. Right. And another person's like, are you mad at me? Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, no, I just, I just answered your question. <laughs> and it, and the, the point I'm trying to make is that like there, there was so much, that person read into just a simple like right like you know yeah yeah hey. just a simple yes yeah just a simple Hello. yes wait who who is that it's me Olivia oh what's up Olivia dude up? finally been trying oh, to get this girl it's to join funny. in a chat for decades decades <laughs> who's Olivia turn off my fan it's like too loud for me to hear it's one of the homies yeah Olivia is one of the homies yeah we're we're in this uh, stream group. Uh, the, on Facebook, you're not you're Mostly not invited to politics, it. Right? Yeah, we do talk a lot of po- about politics, but it's definitely a safe space. Yeah. <laughs> Way too much. Every time I read your thread, I'm just like infuriated. I'm like, how are these people so misinformed to the point where like everybody else has to like try to educate them on some something that they could have googled? And I had a talk with Will. Where it was like, you gotta stop trolling these people. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. hard, you gotta talk like there comes a threshold where i'm like okay i need to like see if i can just talk to this person right. like via real life yeah because this is going nowhere it's literally going in circles i think people think i'm like actually really angry i mean i am angry but i think people are, like, <laughs> i'm like, like really really that angry. explains it that explains i it. actually am because there's always just like oh it's a bitchy woman and like you know like, because I use a lot of punctuation, and like, I think that makes you sound more serious and it, angry sometimes. It's, so. it's true, man. That's that's the point that I was. Um, I use punctuation. Yeah, I do, and I I actually see that because like when you use. <clears throat> I didn't know that was a thing. This must be serious. <laughs> yeah, it's if like you a... Use a lot of like exclamation mark. It's kind of like you're emphasizing or you're kind of trying to yell something out. But now, yeah. back in my day when I went to school. And I got I got educated. Punctuation was important. I agree, but even like, when the internet came about, mm-hmm. like, there were periods within your sentence, double press space bar after a sentence. I think with our right space. people, though, there's like this anti-intellectualism that runs really deep. So they kind of think you sound like hoity-toity when you're. Oh, you think you're better than me? Yeah, yeah basically. I'm not even kidding. It's like, oh, well, you use. Uh, semicolon, so you must be a bitch. <laughs> you activated my trap card, you All slut. right, hold on. Let me uh, let me take a short break and answer some of these questions, and then we'll yeah. l- let's oh, pause yeah, the conversation. No, sorry. Did <laughs> now that Olivia here, we can stop talking about all this stuff. No, I don't want to oh. make it seem that way. <laughs> uh, I, I just realized like people wrote like a lot of questions. Let me just go through this real fast. Yeah, go ahead. Get back on it. Uh, hey Anthony, I have a question. I am two years into art, not a beginner anymore, but not good either. When can I start posting my art online? I don't have any art friends. I could be your art friend, and I, I want to post it somewhere. Uh, you can either like have a blog or a Tumblr. Uh, I think it's good to post often, just as a habit. You can use Facebook too, and then whenever you feel like you're good, like 
the best way to tell is just look at your work compared to somebody else that you think is pretty good. And if it's pretty close, then just start posting and then just get in the habit of just like slowly cycling the, the old work out with new. Um, but two years is, is a good amount of time, but you know, you definitely need more. Uh, how do you get good at design? Uh, look at good designs often and try to learn from them. That's the, that's the quick answer. <laughs> um, but I would say learn uh, shape design and then learn um, like how to draw cool stuff. Basically what makes the drawing worth drawing. You know, sometimes yeah. people will, will paint something really good, but it's not really cool. Wait, uh, hold on, hold on, shameless plug. Doesn't AJ have a video uh, on how to design? I do. <gasps> I do. And it talks about the important points of designing, like contrast, shape yes. language, Whatever. and all of that. Get out of here, yeah. Asian. <laughs> Dumb road. Yeah, yeah. You can always go there, but like, just the, the short of it of, is basically, yeah, like you have to look at what makes things look good on a very objective level. And then as well as you have to know why things are cool on like a gut level, like why people would like to go watch a movie about, you know, a man is called Ant-Man that can turn into like a microscopic thing. Like what's cool about that? And analyze it and try to come up with a, a good reason. Uh, dude, you're the reason I'm grinding. Oh man. Or gr gr Grinfin? Grinfin? I think you... Is D and what? F close to each other? They are. Okay. <laughs> they meant the right Run next to each other. Run yeah, next yeah. to each other. There's also a few uh, apps. I think there's missing a, you put app, apps. Uh, one is called Amino Art, I think. It's pretty supportive, lots of new peeps. Oh, that's cool, I never heard of that. Amino Art, all right. Uh, dude, you're the reason I'm grinding. Oh, he wrote it again, but he corrected himself. I'm doing my best uh, without even thinking on the negative stuff. Thanks a lot, man, that's great. Oh, and then someone said, hello, Olivia. Oh, Hi. I can smell friendly racism cause uh, conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, oh. see, I, I could totally make casual racist remarks, right? Because I happen to be not racist. I, I hate all ethnic groups equally. So, yeah. Not on Twitch, bro. You're banned. <laughs> I Wait, hate them what? all. Is this a question? <laughs> no, no, they're, they're just talking. Because I was just, oh, I was making okay. fun of when when he came in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm a little slow. Yeah, no I always say that. I always say that. I don't hate anyone. I hate everyone. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate. I don't hate one particular person. I hate all persons. But hey, yeah. Anthony, what kind of assignments are you in the mentorship program? Oh, just like homework based off of your uh, abilities. So some people are a little bit uh, behind and some people are really ahead. And so depending on where you're at, it depends on how much I make you work. It's pretty simple. I think that's, that's it for the Twitch and... YouTube. By the way, Facebook peeps, if you do want to ask a question, I am paying attention. I haven't seen any questions yet, but you know, until the stream's over, feel free yeah. to ask. I'm trying yeah. to get it in here. But anyway, getting back to the kind of the topic at hand about like how online personas are way more warped than like real life conversations, right? Like Olivia, you're talking about how people may assume that you're just a crazy bitch. Because, because <laughs> of your punctuation, I've always assumed that. I was like, "Wow, she punct she punctuates well. She must be a crazy <laughs> bitch." But you know what? I, I like crazy bitches, so I'll, I'll maintain our friendship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. So when I punctuate my posts, does that mean I'm just a nerdy Asian? No, you you're you're just uh, you're just someone <laughs> that needs to be deported back to the motherland. So <laughs> then when I do it, I'm an angry black man. Damn. Yeah, when you do it, you're an angry black man. When I do it, nobody knows. They don't know what to think. That's why I like to keep them on their toes. Yeah. Wait, why aren't you an angry black man? Well, I, I can be That's some days. Fair. Some days I can. And then the other days, I can just be an angry Asian man. It all depends on how I'm feeling. But then some days I can be an angry white man. Oh, dang, dude. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but you, you can get away Isn't with more. angry white man? <laughs> you can get away with more of your angry white man, so so you got the privilege. You got half privilege, right? The white privilege. The half white privilege. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh -oh. like, we hit it. Uh -oh. We hit a soft spot. I can feel it. I can feel it soft and squishy. Dude. <laughs> there was not even a slight chuckle. He's like, "How dare you?" Not, you know, not nothing once about my life. my life has anyone treated me white. <laughs> well, that's because not, not a day that's because, in my life. <laughs> that's because he don't look white. I know. Uh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me look up a picture. 
Lights what? You don't know what? You don't know what Michael? You don't know what I look like? What the That's no. racist. I knew it. Got I'm light skinned black with. Oh. Uh, you know what? You look more Hispanic. How dare you? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you know, my uncle did get deported when I was 13. Oh. See, I knew this was a soft spot. All right, we can move on. Move on. <laughs> I was just trying to be joking around, but this has got real, real fast. All right. Michael. I'm like 99.99% white. I checked, so. <laughs> you, you literally checked? Are, are, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm super. My brother and I both got DNA tests because we were just curious, and yeah, there's nothing in there. <laughs> what, what's your uh, <laughs> It's just a sheet of paper. What's your white? It's just white. It just uh, says white. Yeah. So there was like this myth. Well, part of the reason we did it is because there was this myth. You know, a lot of a lot of I think a lot of white people in general have this like, oh, we're related to an Indian princess or whatever. So like my brother and I, we had this like myth about a member of our family that supposedly was Iroquois, and like it turns out that actually the real story is a lot cooler. She was a translator, and like she she like spoke like sixteen different dialects of. Uh, uh, Eastern United States dialects, and it was pretty cool, but like, you know, I guess it got diluted because people thought making a fake story about her being Native American was cooler. So we got a test to check, and it turns out, no, there's there's nothing in there. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> which is not, it doesn't make me like sad or anything, it's just kind of <laughs> like, I, it frustrates me how history is only as good, I guess, as the people who write it. So that's true. Uh, yeah, I, I I feel like it was a valuable lesson to learn, and I think that I don't know, it was just interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm like super duper European as <laughs> fuck. No. I got uh, I got an interesting little tidbit about my white side that I learned when I was in high school. So I had to do research on my family, mm -hmm. um, and it turned. So I'm like, I think on my white side, I'm Irish, German, and uh viking or something whatever wherever the vikings are <laughs> that's right <laughs> but like it's Asian, the, the like, then viking yeah, yeah. got it cool. the the family name is gun g u n -E, which is a shorter version of gunderson uh-huh anyway so the son cool of a gun story, literally uh, yeah Patrick for son of a the, gun the coolest story and kind of tragic <laughs> one is that my fourth great grandfather was a king and oh, i think yeah, in like Ireland or somewhere. Um, and we had a, a castle, it was Gun Castle. And cool. they married off the prince to a princess from another castle across the water. And he he was sent over with some stuff, uh, went to go marry her, and then was sent back with a bunch of stuff, killed her. Whoa. Yeah, he killed the princess. And oh, then for like... <laughs> For like 20 years, they just like got stuff from the other kingdom, like for free. What? It was really messed up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, what's the word? When you don't remember like exactly the details, whatever. I, I don't remember the exact details, but that's essentially what yeah. happened. Then like 20 years later or something, they, they found out that you killed my daughter. Um, and we've been sending you like a ton of money. So they came and attacked my family's castle and destroyed it. Good. Oh, good! Wow, that's it's a very, very cool story. Fuck your family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a cool story because I was like, "Damn, that's brutal." Also, yeah. awesome. so, so are you in line for any kind of throne at the moment? No, dude. My, I just said my castle got destroyed. Yeah, they, they, that uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> that can be rebuilt. <laughs> no, I don't want to be castle of a princess killer. Uh, I think yeah. the one of the most. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I oh, think one ahead. of the most. Uh, valuable things that i've learned with that though is like my privilege as a person of european descent to like know so much of my family history because mm -hmm. like a lot of people like indigenous americans and like people descended from african-american slaves like they don't have any kind of genealogy that goes back 400 fucking you know mine on my mom's side goes back like five maybe 800 years my dad's side was all just like poor mud farmers they ate potatoes but you know, at least there's, I know that. <laughs> there's like a paper trail. Yeah, there's yeah. a paper trail, like, because there's documents and, like, you know, other people. Like, if, if my great grandmother were actually Iroquois, there probably wouldn't be much else. So, 
we were yeah. actually able to find information about her and find out that in fact she was European as hell and very British and married a French trapper and like just made a shit ton of money translating and trading. Anyway, yeah, yeah cool stuff that. though. Genealogy is fascinating. I just wish it was available to more humans. <laughs> yeah, I um I understand that completely because uh like my last name is Jones, right? From my dad's oh, shit. side. My last name on my mom's side is Jones. <laughs> yeah, that means that uh, your your family might have uh, owned mine. <laughs> well, shit. Yeah, right. and also it's impossible to know because there's so many Joneses. Oh but yeah, I'm sure you, my. You owe me some money. Me. Just throw. I'll just Venmo okay. me. <laughs> Venmo me. You know, I have. <laughs> and then we should be really, good. Really, really that. No, I'm just kidding, dude. You, I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, like, but but um, I can give you more. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I, I agree with the idea that, like, for me yeah. to try to follow back, like, I don't know how far I can get because even my family name itself is not an African descent name. I don't know yeah. if I have any people from Africa, but I'm almost positive Jones is not one of them. <laughs> you know, it's not one of the popular African names. Right. Yeah. And so I, I used to make fun of people who have like last name Jones, like I just did with your family. Like I remember I ran yeah. into uh, Jamie Jones once, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, like you owe me like twenty five percent of all your commissions off of all the artwork you do." <laughs> and at the time, it, he was cracking up. He thought it was really funny. I was not laughing. I'm just kidding. I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if I was super serious? So, so like he was like, "What in the world? Who is a stranger?" Angry. Yeah. Yeah. Operations, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me today. Like every yeah. painting you do, you have to also put my name on there. And so, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie and Anthony Jones, and then we're good. Um, yeah. But it, it's it's true though, right? Like it's just it's it's a weird thing to think that like my last name, although it came from my my dad who's black, and it came from his dad who's black, um, that eventually it ends with that was just their slave name. Like because they were part of the Jones family farm, or whatever we did in the past. Yeah. But I, I won't. I can never go back to like finding out like who in Africa that I'm actually connected to, and that is yeah. kind of sad. That is bullshit. Sort of it sucks. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the kids that can't find their parents. <sighs> sad. Stressing me out so much. I it live I had to throw that in there. The ice prisons, and it pisses me off every day. Oh yeah, it's pretty. I felt it's pretty bad. A little better because I tailgated a DHS employee kind of aggressively, and it like made me feel a little better about my life. Cause like Are you at this serious? point, yeah, I did. I don't give a shit. I'm a white lady. I can get DHS? away with that. DHS. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't like, fucking I can't, arrest you. I can't, I can't believe no. it. See, what are you talking see, about, Whit? fucking arrested. So, like, she, I'm, she's I'm just a, a tiny little freckly white the whitest girl. Yeah, she's get. a little white girl, dude. Like, this never... Yeah. Uh, how many... I mean, so I saw I'm this... I'm using my privilege uh, to, like, uh, try I to mean, be like, a bitch to a DHS the, employee for a minute. <laughs> that the, the hardly should matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, of I course it shouldn't matter. You're right. getting shot. It shouldn't matter, but it does, and that makes me sad. But also, like... You know, at this point, I just feel like there's no, like, I'm just doing my job. Like, there's no excuse for that. Like, they are literally imprisoning children less than a mile from my house. It's not an adult prison. It's a child prison. So, Oh, wait. Yeah. I didn't catch all that. They're doing that here in Seattle? In SeaTac, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're spreading the kids center. out. There's thousands of I didn't think that instances, we were doing dude. that shit. No, it's oh, not. Yeah. It's not that, like, it's it's like you we're are doing it. Here. They so are bringing not, them over. They're like, it's not that we're doing it. Sorry. Yeah, go uh, for it. You go ahead. There's a little <laughs> delay. Yeah, uh, how dare but there's, you? They're doing... Uh, so private prisons and detention centers are contracted through ICE to take uh, extra prisoners. But this facility is specifically has been a child prison since its inception. So it's right off 200th. It's actually like literally next door to Angle Lake Station. And it's funny because every time I've driven by it, I was just like, damn, that's a really fucking ugly building. Because it's like this huge, like gray, brutalist, like super gross yeah. square trapezoid icky structure. And I found out that it was a child <laughs> prison through my friend uh, who does a lot of like uh, social work kind of stuff for, for one of the major airlines. She like rewrites their policies on sexual harassment and stuff and racism um 
But anyway, yeah, she told me about that. Uh, so it's actually a prison that ICE has a contract with. And one of the things that the protesters are trying to accomplish here and in Portland, Oregon, is getting those prison contracts ended. And they've actually done quite a few of those in Oregon now, have, have ended their mm. contracts with ICE. Um, but we're trying to get this one out. That's pretty awful. <laughs> The problem is, though, it's still going to be a child detention center at the end of the day. And, like, I just think at the end of the day, kids shouldn't go to prison ever. Ever. <laughs> what if they chop the pants yeah, That's up? a weird concept. How dare you? Then they need therapy because they probably saw somebody else chopping somebody else up. And, like, I just think the abuse is I cycle. knew it. It's the video games. Let's outlaw no. the video games. No, like... <laughs> I knew it. That's, that's not what I meant. I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> like... Got him. Uh, <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs> the problem with That's like it. physical abuse and, and abuse and like when children yeah. do that, it's because they've seen an adult doing it and they think it's normal. Like, yeah, games. like no, people that grow up to abuse children were usually abused mm. as children themselves. Like no, it's you're, you're really totally fucked right. up. So yeah, like putting them in a prison doesn't really do anything and it doesn't, you know, rehabilitate them. It really just puts it, them it into the the prison industrial complex. And it makes money. It makes a lot of money. Yeah. It does make a lot of money. Anyway, yeah, got him. I want to. I want to ask you. <laughs> yeah. we this, I made this myself medium. sad. <laughs> to talk about this real quick, you, you on, shared something earlier. Okay, hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on to that thought, though. Yeah, yeah. I want to pause periodically so I can like talk to the folks in the chat. So you're streaming on Twitch here, not really paying attention to F FB. I asked over there how the indie dev is going. Oh yeah. Um. Oh yeah. What's up? Uh, I took a little bit of break. I've been uh, trying to focus in on learning some more 3D. Uh, and then also I've been trying to uh, catch up on some freelance. And I'm starting my classes again pretty soon. So, so that's what's been going on. I'm trying to get all my stuff sorted out. But I, I'm going to get back into it probably the coming week. And then is there any chance... Is there any uh, chance of you coming or s commenting on some of the art? I would love it uh, if my favorite artist rating it uh, i'm thinking you're assuming can i review your work not at the moment but if you just like comment on one of my things maybe I, I'll, I'll throw you a little shout out how poppin is this mixer gonna be next month oh it's gonna be fun man just hang out chat play video games draw stuff like that uh that some game of thrones craziness i think that was referring to your story yeah like hey anthony Princess i'm playing killer planning on doing the mentorship in the next couple of months after I save up a little more, but only if you promise me we can be BFFs and talk politics. I try to minimize the politics whenever I'm talking in the chat unless it's relevant, or in uh, my class, unless it's relevant to the point that I'm trying to make, but I try to try to prevent myself from talking too much, because um, you know, it's a class. Uh, Anthony, hi. Yeah, time is paid for. Yeah. What, what concept uh, artist's most important qualities, concept characters, does it have... Oh, significance, uh, significant differences to concepting for games and the movies. Um, I'm assuming you're just saying, like, what's important in terms of just concept art in general and b between movies and games. So you have to learn anatomy and stuff like that, like anything that involves drawing a character well. Um, but on top of that, um, the difference between games and movies and stuff like that it's usually just the, the quality and uh, the deadline. So, like, sometimes movies want things, like, right away and at a high quality. So, you're going to have to probably learn some sort of photo bashing or 3D techniques uh, if you want to keep uh, at the pace or just be really good at painting. Like, can paint really good. Um, with games, there's a little bit more time to kind of, like, you know, really explore the design. So, it's not too much of a problem there. And then... Um, is there going to be a program in August? Yes, I'm going to probably release it uh, early next week sometime. So just keep your eye out for it. Uh, Word. Wish I had more time to focus on 3D at the moment. But yeah, busy with work and indie game at the moment. We'll get back into it. 3D is dope. 3D is dope. I want to try to... learn 3D. Yeah, I I'm trying to learn it for game dev. Like I want to like make like this uh, game. And I want to kind of try to like really capitalize on my painting abilities and I can do that if I can learn yeah. 3D and hand painted 3D and then try to find a way to mix in my style. I was playing Diablo last night as reference <gasps> and I was like, oh man, they do a really, like the Necromancer is really good. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm just trying to find a way to kind of get that good at that medium so that way I can like make my games look 
it's closer to my art style. Because I already have some yeah. good skill there, so it'd be cool to transfer that into like a game. Anyway. We got a face look. Um, there's one more. Can I make a full 3D concepts in ZBrush and be hired in the industry? Yeah, that's an easy one. Yes. Uh, what do you think about 3D for concept art in general? I think it's great. Whatever makes good artwork. It's, the only thing I'm against is if it's like straight up plagiarism. Like if you steal someone else's artwork, it's obviously not cool. And yeah, it, don't do that. <laughs> and if you partially steal someone's artwork, I don't think that's cool either. Like if like you you don't. Uh, mix it up enough that it's like clearly not yours it's still you know that's not good but 3d generally makes you you generally have to make the artwork yourself uh, especially if you're trying to create something interesting but photo bashing or um, splicing with other people's art I see this happen yeah. I don't really mind the art splicing I think it's more taboo because it's closer to hit closer to home uh, because people don't think too much about it when, when it comes to photos but it's kind of the same thing you know but my, yeah. my theory, or my thoughts on it, I mean, not theory, my thoughts on it is that as long as it's, like, really mashed, you know, and like, really hard to tell where the, or, like, origin came from, I, I, I can see that that can still be claimed as yours, right? It's kind of like a real remix. But other than, like, other than that, yeah, like, uh, I'm not really, I'm not really adverse to any kind of appro approach. You were going to say something, Olivia? And then I think oh. Mike had a question. I was just, you know, affirming what you were already you're saying. Like, oh, I just, just I was going to yes, ask though, yes, lady, if you could, <laughs> if you could uh, define, I guess, what you consider uh, plagiarism a little bit more. Yeah, just like straight up go into your website, taking your artwork, and then just saying it's my artwork. <laughs> yeah. Like straight up, just like not doing much. Uh, there was an example that happened recently to me and some other artists where. It was, it was kind of like Saw collage. That. Yeah, it was a collage of all of artwork. They like literally like oh, yeah, yeah. out my uh, artwork and put it so behind someone saying, else's though. backward. Some people might consider that more okay yeah, yeah, than so, others, so, uh, and that's stupid. But yeah, no, I mean, she's like, to clarify that. yeah, if they like took my artwork and then they really mixed it up and it was impossible for me to tell, right? Yeah. And I actually did an example for my students once because they were curious too. And I took like someone else's painting and I did like this huge paint over of it. Uh, because they did mm -hmm. it in the past, they would like take people's painting, like Kakai uh, Kataki, or I don't, I don't think he did this, but he um, would, he wouldn't do this with other people's paintings, but he'll do it with his own paintings. He'll take like another painting and he'll like overlay it on top and flip it and warp it, and it add like texture. I see stuff like this happen all the time, and I know some yeah. artists in an industry who would do this, who would take like not even uh, they won't take just their painting, they'll take other people's paintings, and they'll do this, but it would it would be so. Um, so different though at the end that it's it's, it's hard to claim plagiarism right mm -hmm. um but i get like how people would feel that's a lot more taboo like what <gasps> taking someone else's painting how dare it but then if you photo bash at all it's the same thing you know and so i, I tend to just try to paint as much as i can <laughs> without because that's obviously the safest right um but even if you were to break it down like my own paintings it's like I'm inspired by several different artists. I just happen to internalize this and then put it onto like this canvas, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's even harder to tell if it comes from this kind of place, you know, when it comes like almost entirely from my own mind, right? But it's not like I am inventing anything. I'm definitely borrowing a lot of ideas and concepts from other artists. It's just a lot more nuanced and well hidden because I'm deliberately hiding attributes that i love in other people's artwork you know mm -hmm. where i think the, the ta like where the taboo has some justification with like taking someone else's painting is that like you're skipping a lot of that right you're skipping a lot of the hard work that goes into internalizing a lot of that information you yeah know? somebody else did it for you <laughs> yeah so i can i can see why people would be upset with that but i mean we see it in music we see it in fashion it's not anything new and it's never gonna it's go more away just shitty if you don't provide credit of any kind you're just like i made this <laughs> it was all me <laughs> well that's, that's what i'm saying like you you might you might some of your favorite artists might be doing this and you have no clue and yeah. even if you sh if they showed you all their examples you would still kind of be like what they use like they use a, a image from like uh you know like a card magazine and like mm -hmm. a painting from um craig mullins and now it's like a it's a uh dancing turtle right <laughs> you know it's like completely yeah. 
it, it, you wouldn't be able to tell. That's my point. Like, it has to be clearly um, yours. Because there, there's some beauty in, like, finding some texture and um, aesthetic from someone else's work, whether it's totally. in sculptural form or whatever, and then finding a way to kind of amplify it to be something different. We all different. have to do that as artists. Right. Like, yeah. Like, oh, there's it, no way you could do art, like, completely originally. I just can't get behind that concept that everything like i think we're all influenced by people so yeah. that we like yeah. our style is very directly informed by stuff we like so well, it kind of makes sense we would remix it yeah on top of all of that um there's a couple other examples that you can give where uh, we've gotten emails from folks asking permission to do 3d uh, versions of anthony's work but they ask permission Ooh. and most That's of the time cool. it was cool with it and you know they'll they'll credit AJ in the art station post, and it's pretty cool to see you know, what these guys can do. Yeah, I'm almost but always yeah. A, with it. This is an example. Yeah, I love seeing those. Those and are that, so that's, cool. Yeah, and that's clearly transformative because it's a whole another medium. You yeah, know? Absolutely, and I get so, it. Like they're trying to do like a portfolio, and and like that's yeah. And in in some ways, that's like they're going to be their job anyways. Just take someone else's exactly. concepts and then make it into 3D. So it's clear to me that's that's their intention. Yeah, and it's it's also it's also nice they email and ask permission. Yeah, I mean, that's sometimes that's I, obvious. I don't think you have to. Yeah, that's but, that's yeah. obvious. And you know, and to be clear, like if they didn't ask but they still credited me, I would still be okay with it. Right? Yeah, like, I think I've the seen that happen. Part is what matters. Yeah, I think if they ask, it just adds other uh, adds another layer of like awesome, like real politeness, right? Yeah. Like they did, they didn't just feel that they can just do whatever they want. Right, even yeah, though clearly they can't. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so that, that's pretty much how I feel about that, just to clarify. Right. Let me hit this Facebook. Yeah, okay. I was going to say it, you have some Facebook stuff. It's kind of funny, though, we're complimenting people for being the actual human. <laughs> that's how it was. Oh, no, 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 you can that's, just. You, can just, you can just. <laughs> Wait, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Oh, I was just going to say, like. You know, based on even on earlier conversations, it, there's a wide range of people, and I I am losing a lot of faith in humanity lately. So I'm just like <laughs> you're just listening to the wrong standard. stuff, man. The, no, not not even because I'm just trying to like uh, unplug from all of that, and I'm just like my bar for people is so low. Yeah. That, like when I see decent people, I'm like nice, nice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like that's all that needs to be said, right? Like. Uh, I saw a heartwarming video on Facebook. This is unrelated. I saw a heartwarming video on Facebook of this garbage man like coming down the street. Wait, this little, wait hold little on, I'm talking about like okay. a man who handles with garbage, not a man that just calling. Oh, uh, not like garbage people. Okay, waste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, guess, yeah. this garbage oh, man. Oh, wow. yeah. like, whoa! Literal Literal employee employee waste garbage. man. Yeah. Waste. Yeah. Waste, yeah. waste management. Employing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Got it. I got it now. I yeah, just want to clarify. No, not, he wasn't a school. garbage person. He's a garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this individual, he was, uh, he was riding down the street picking up the garbages, and there's this little white boy who's so excited to see his favorite garbage man. And the guy gets gets down, picks him up, you know, lets him pull the levers on the garbage truck. You know, it says, oh, it's your birthday. Let me get you a present or whatever. And it's just, it was a heartwarming moment, and it's just little moments like that. that you know, Nice. <laughs> you know that's all you can say. I'm telling you, hey. dude. People are more, more like uh, more than uh, not. People are like that. They're very, very kind to one another. I hope so. It's just I online. So. They're not. They just aren't. Like not to get too specific. Um, like uh, oh. there was a thread that uh, Olivia had that she commented on something that happened recently, and then I was uh -huh. debating one of her friends, like for like like dozens of like comments. And I, I realized like it was getting out of control. And we were talking uh, privately, me and Olivia, and she's like, "No, he's a really good person. You know, he's really nice." And I was like, "I believe you." And that's why I was trying to like talk with him, right? In fact, uh, there was a guy on my thread, right? I remember you arrested me too, when, right? You're like, "Who are these people <laughs> that are yeah, that, following?" That, that, I'm like, "They're actually friends of mine." They yeah, just that tell tell Rajin guy. I was like, "Man." Well, I don't know about that guy. I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but... there you go leave the names out of but it. yeah but yeah. there was there was uh, one yeah there was one specific person that i know like people were kind of frustrated with uh but that person i know and like and i actually talked with them offline i was like what 
What are you doing, dude? Like, what? what's your position? Like, truthfully. Because <laughs> I don't believe you're holding... I, I think you're being uh, dishonest. And we talked about it, and it, ironically, yeah, he, he is actually just trying to challenge a different point. And I was like, why don't you just talk about that point then? Like, why did you go... And, and he's like, oh, it just happens. Like, you just get caught up, and you just start, like, barking at each other. I'm like, I know, but you just got to take it easy. Uh, I remember take I cut my... Easy. Yeah, I cut myself doing this a long time ago. I used to, like, get real aggro, you know? And then I realized, like, it's pointless. I'm not going to convert anyone's position <laughs> by being super aggro and just constantly telling them that they don't know what they're talking about. Um, and so, yeah, I changed my tune. Like, I still would love to talk with that guy, Olivia, if there's ever an opportunity. Maybe if yeah. I'm ever in Seattle, I'll, I'll meet up and maybe you can like slowly like be like, hey, you know, I'm going to go out oh, and meet up with like a friend. So and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'll be there. And yeah, then. Yeah, and then. Yeah. And then what, what, is it, what is it called? It's um, where, um, like, what do they do in Dateline? It's like how to catch Dateline. a predator. But it's like how to make friends in real life. That's what it would be instead. It would actually be a lot more genuine. On the subject of I like. Take a seat. People taking online stuff really out of context. Like, uh, somebody just like unfriended my fiance and then declined <laughs> the invitation to my wedding over a gift. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Gift? This makes me no, no, a, no a, a gift. Gift like, oh, for those gift. who <laughs> really shitty. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. You might have that dodged a bullet to be honest. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, but that's then that's I'm showing them, heart. showing you uh, their true colors. You know, my you know my no. mom always said. Whoa. Wait, 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 what was the gift? What was the gift? I don't even okay, know, don't but like, that. I feel like that's not worth like. Wow. That's like, weird. I hope I can yeah. discuss this with this person in person because, like, I feel. That's yeah, stressful, it's, but it's, it's like one of those control, things, man. you know. Like, it's if you don't have the. It's the interpretive. The, uh, I guess, what's the word for it? The inclinations of their voice and like their mannerisms. It's or really facial hard to expressions tell if even. Full of shit and, you know, just forcing around. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear Because, like, that. if anyone knew my fiance, like, they would know that he's like 99% like a ham 99% <laughs> of the time. Like, he's never serious about anything. I'm sure that's so, true. Yeah. Well, except when he is, and then he's kind of insufferable but i still love him <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a different thing right like you, you guys know each other intimately so i'm sure you see but i think uh, people have a hard time like you know interpreting the nuance i guess when there's not a, a face yeah absolutely most so, definitely so anyways the, the facebook i think we got off yeah, yeah. again yeah, yeah. you were like about to get um, into it yeah so uh Tan Fam said, "What's up, Tan Fam? Will you turn this piece into color later? I want to see a bit of that process. No. I have difficulties in transitioning no. from grayscale to color." I already told you guys I don't like colored. I don't like colored paintings. I don't like colored people. Oh, they got racist again. Whoa! Aren't you <laughs> colored? Aren't you colored? <laughs> no, oh, that's toxic. I know. Or watch out. But see, this is this is a great example, right? Like, obviously, I was joking, right? Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. But if then, but if it was written, <laughs> dude, man, uh, yeah, people would throw gifts at me and be uninviting me to their weddings, right? <laughs> or I would I, I would uninvite myself to a wedding. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, weddings are about both of us, so it's like I feel like I'm being dragged into this. Things. It's like I didn't do anything. I didn't post a shitty gif. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that terrible of a person. <laughs> you're the. You're the terrible half no, of this relationship. Y'all are a package now. <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to couple with the. Yeah, you have to. You have to file your wrong. taxes together. So it uh, counts. <laughs> package deal. Um. um yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm not gonna paint this one, but next time I will. I promise. There you go. Stay or tuned. Ten. Yeah. Come on back. <laughs> Um, okay, and I wanted to throw in there what my mom always says because we always need some motherly advice, you know. Can't can't go without that. So what? she always told me growing up, "Well, come on, you need to listen to your moms." <laughs> anyway, uh, when somebody shows you their true colors, you should believe them. Oh, you know, 
And I always loved hearing that from her because it's it has rung, rung true throughout my whole life. You know, it, it takes one time for somebody to say something really messed up or do you wrong. And you shouldn't, you know, think, oh, it was just that one time. Because often they're showing you their true colors. So watch out. Yep. Mm, this is true. I think that's one of the wisest pieces of advice I've ever seen. Um, and I've seen like different variations of that proverb, nope. I guess, You're elsewhere. Wrong. It only came from Michael's mother. All <laughs> those... <laughs> if we were to trace back every instance where you've heard this phrase in any incarnation, it would trace back to Mrs. Young. Yeah. Mrs. Young. <laughs> um, okay. And then our buddy John over in the chat saying, Hey, oh. I have no friends named John. Oh. <laughs> so many my, times. You my, can have one. One of my best friends, John Francis McGinnis. I know no oh. such person. How long are you guys gonna be streaming? Uh, I'm know. actually gonna close close shop pretty soon. You gotta you gotta hop in here sooner, John. Yeah, yeah it's back. almost my bedtime. He's got a baby, it's alright. Yeah. I don't have a baby, I'm just tired. Well, baby. <laughs> I'm I just, watch babies for I'm, work sometimes, though. So. Yeah. Well, well, that's temporary. So, you don't you yeah. don't have to make sure that they're still alive. Oh, God. After you leave work. That stresses me oh. out. Well, I do have to make sure they're alive while I'm there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's but temporary. After I leave, it's their problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a temporary love. I do really, I do really actually love the kids that I watch. So they're like, they're they're family to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> are you the Are you the garbage man? <laughs> it's She's a garbage, the garbage man. woman. The garbage In a way. woman. Yeah. Garbage woman. <laughs> no, I believe you. Yeah, I, I used to work at the Boys and Girls Club, and I really enjoyed hanging out with the kids too. I didn't love all of them. Yeah. Though. There, there was some bad apples. That I was like, I don't need that. Don't some like of their you. friends really pissed me off, though. There's this one that, like, the first time he got in the car, I just wanted to like. I've never physically wanted to like. <laughs> Slap Shake a kid. babies. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I use booster seats because I'm all about safety, you know. And the kids are <laughs> And, and it's against the law, isn't it? Not to have that. booster seats. Yes, it's yeah. also against the law. But gotcha. like the first thing that the nine year old's like friend, he's just this little kind of spoiled shit, says like when he gets in the car, he's like, hey, hey, <laughs> you have a booster seat, guess your babies. And I like Yeah, that kid's gonna grow up stable. Told him in graphic <laughs> detail what would happen if he didn't have a booster seat. <laughs> yeah. How, how long are you supposed to have a booster seat? Because now he doesn't fuck with me ever anymore. <laughs> That's so right. I was like, well, well, Johnny. His name's not Johnny, but I was like. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to dox children. <laughs> Johnny Simpleton on Simpleton Street, 445. <laughs> Yeah, I, I the get booster you. prevents you from having permanent damage to your trachea and all this other stuff that can separate from your body if you don't have it on. Yeah. No, I remember. What's, what's uh, the yeah. law on that? How, how old do you have to be? It's a, it's a weight and it's a uh, it's oh, it's mostly it's on weight. It's a weight and height thing. Yeah. yeah mostly and, like, weight and height. He's pretty tall. He'll be out of it soon. But, like, do do the yeah. police drive around with like a scale and measuring tape? No, not really, but what will happen is, like, let's say you're in a car accident, and let's say you didn't properly have the booster seats or the seat belt or the car seat properly. I'm not anchored. saying don't, don't pay, you know, for health reasons. No, but saying. to your point, like, I'm trying to explain, like, like I don't think cops are, like, that's very low on the you. list of things they enforce. I think you're right to, to that intuition. But what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is that um, for those of you, oh, well, like AJ said no cops, like, obviously, what? No, it's still obey the law, but yeah. <clears throat> but what ends up happening is like let's say you get in a, a severe car accident, um, and your child dies, right? So now you have the tragedy of your own child dying. But then when they investigate that you didn't have oh, the proper that charge on top, then they'll be yeah. like, yeah, it was it was your fault, or potentially could have been prevented, right? Yeah. And it, everyone is called a hindsight law. Yeah, everyone is called exactly, but it's like you know, like um. Neg like a, negligence, negligence, negligence driving and possibly vehicular manslaughter yeah. basically it and sucks so it's like so, doubling yeah. down right like Good it's like point. Feel, use a booster it feels bad yeah it feels bad to like throw hey! <laughs> yeah, man. sometimes yeah. sometimes parents aren't 
Yeah, sometimes. Oh, come on, that was so easy. easy. That was so funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Sometimes parents aren't trying to be, you know, parents. people that are gonna, yeah, be bad to their children. But sometimes yeah. things happen, yeah. and then, like it's a really bad accident. So it's just, it, yeah. it feels bad, like double down on the. But it, you have to do it so that other people will do it. Like they'll learn yep. two, like they'll learn two lessons. One that their chi their their child will probably die. And then two, they'll go to jail for potentially letting them even child. longer. Yeah, and so yeah. it's like it's a really good deterrent when you hear it. And you're like, oh shoot, okay, yeah. Like if yeah, I didn't I think... like my kid in the first place, now I have incentive to do it just because I might go to jail, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I do it um, for the and... first reason, which is keeping them alive. I can care less yeah. about going to jail, Cause... but some people don't care about their kids, and sometimes they don't realize. Yeah, my question was strictly like enforcement. Yeah, That's I don't all. think it's enforced. I don't. It's like, hard to enforce yeah. seatbelt laws or anything like that of any kind. It's just like if you get into a traffic violation of any kind and they see you doing it, like you can get a negligent driving charge on top of it. So, but also like, oh, I forgot what I was going to say to that note. God, <laughs> I hate it when that happens. <laughs> it's all right. I think there's some people ah! talking. Hold on. Who's, who's stopping you if you're, wait, I'm, what? Oh, there's a lot of chat that i wasn't able to get to Whoops. i don't know how to i don't know how to scroll up on this restream chat but someone's talking about the business degree in school i'm not sure what this person really weird question sorry i can't even read the rest of it it's like cropped you can probably see it on the stream too that it's like it crops so if you don't, I don't know how to see what questions you're getting uh, done. I ha yeah i have it on yeah i have it on my um my computer i oh, was it on it's not letting you scroll up. It, it's not high enough resolution to see. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm I'm looking to get into animation and am new to digital painting. I'm actually trying to branch out. I'm currently a graphic designer, motion designer. Would robot pencil classes work for me? Yeah, I help people from different disciplines. Um, if you already have a discipline, then it helps because you already kind of have like the the know all of like or the the you've already kind of produced quality work at some level so it's easier for me to help you transition yes for show sure. can't wait to go to the art mixer awesome man oh yeah one of my students speak of the devil yeah glad to, uh, i'll be looking forward to meet you in real life who's stopping you if you've got the skills for the industry just need to put the effort and uh this person was writing specifically somebody else uh, another quick question regarding the mentorship i am trying to get into animation program which is pretty different from what you do, but do you think it will still help me reach those goals? Um, not it, not directly. It'll, it'll be indirect. It'll teach you just to be a better artist, but I don't know exactly if it translates perfectly. But uh, I've had people who who've done that, who've taken my class to try to just get better at just drawing. And if that's your goal, then we will focus on drawing. We don't necessarily work on painting. We can just get you really good at drawing characters. Uh, nothing that and that that will help like I know a lot of professional artists or professional animators can draw really well um, Even if this in 3d nothing that much other than my current s Smaller skill set, but I'm doing personal improvement on that. I was just Entering college and the current arts and tech program we have is a bit of a scam Yeah, most likely whatever and this is probably the first person's question that I can't read all the way referring to like yeah, it's pretty much just um like I think what AI is being closing down because it's, it's pretty much a scam. But uh, yeah, you, you should probably if you want to get into art, if you want to pursue art, you just got to start painting and designing and just start working on it. It's it's incredibly challenging to do. The reason why other people do other disciplines is because there's very clear and very objective paths to them, but then they end up getting those jobs and feeling very unfulfilled. Uh, especially if they always wanted to be the artist that they, you know, thought that they could be. If you give up on that, that will always haunt you. I have a really good story that I heard from uh, a, a TV show, a Master of None by Aziz Ansari. It's the fig tree story. Just Google it. I'm sure you can probably find it. But it's a really good example of the probably predicament that you're in and how you should think about it. Uh, can we ask about programming or are you planning a stream for... Uh, such specific uh, or so such subjects specifically 
Yeah, maybe if uh, maybe another one we can talk about pro programming. Maybe I'll, I'll work on my game next time. And you guys can see me do it. Uh, I actually use Construct. It's very visual, visually based. Well, I have to have all the juice in my cup, so I'm not sure what that's referring to. <laughs> you don't like color, but I want to buy your tutorial. Start with color. Oh, I actually love color. I was just joking. Uh, congrats, best streaming ever. I love uh, hear a female voice. Oh yeah, and the stories so funny. I think so too. Me and Olivia talk a lot offline, and I've always invited her. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think there is. You know, a lot of issues when it comes to like, you know, representation in our industry. And I don't necessarily think specifically in a game, I can speak for the game, can't speak for a film or advertisement or any of that other stuff. But for a game, like there's not, there isn't like this kind of, uh, you see online that a lot of people make it seem like there's a lot of like, um, like, you know, like sexism within the gaming industry. But the reality is, uh, it just isn't true. There's definitely some, and I'm not going to say that there isn't any Wait, at what, all. Wait, what, Like, within our game industry, there isn't a lot of, like, deliberate sexism, right? There just oh, isn't. Oh, it's not deliberate. Yeah. No. And it so, is so let, Yeah, so hold on. So let me, let me make my <laughs> case so, so, you can, so you can understand the position. Because uh -huh. there's a lot of really good female um, game devs, for instance. I know a lot of them. And... Uh, most of them, you know, the kinds of things that they tell me are just the type of stuff that you would kind of expect. Like, here's a, here's a good example of something that I, I hear and I would believe is true. Um, my friend was telling me how when his um, wife was asking uh, one of their friends, and this is in the film industry, so this is, again, not a parallel. But I hear some of my game dev ladies talk about this stuff, too. Where he would say, or she would ask, like, this guy about, like, I don't know, some camera stuff. And then, and he would like start to ask her tons of questions as if um, she didn't know what she was doing. And then uh, later, like that week or month, um, same dude uh, was talking to him and he asked something similar and he's like, oh yeah, sure, I got you. No, don't worry about it. And he was giving me that as an example of like the kinds of stuff that could happen and, and does happen. And I was like, you know, I, I don't think that's wrong. I think that's true. I think that does happen, you know, but the reason why I think there's such sl like low numbers is not so much because of stuff like that. It's actually because um, uh, a lot of people just don't apply who happen to be female. And a lot of times people don't see that this is even a possibility if you are a female, right? It's changing, obviously, because we have more and more badasses that are just surfacing, right? And like I think what happens is that, uh, for instance, whenever I... Uh, was going through art like reviews when we were looking at portfolios um, it would almost always be like 99% just dudes you know <laughs> like always applying and it wasn't like th does that make sense like it wasn't like we were like oh well here's one female let's just turn her down flat out it's just that they there just wasn't a lot in fact I had some uh, female students and they were talking to me about this and they're like w w what should we do and it's like you got to put yourself out there, especially if you're good, you know, like absolutely if you're good, because, you know, sometimes uh, people are trying to actually see if they can find someone that can help with representation, but they don't want to do it at the cost of like sacrificing merit. Right. Like, you, and that's the that's, in my opinion, sets you up for failure. If you just try to fill a quota, that is really bad because you will set them up for failure, especially if they're not qualified, because then they're not going, they're going to feel overwhelmed and mm -hmm. then, and then they're going to quit or worse, you're going to fire them, you know? And then it sets a bad precedence. And so I think it's best to really hire people who are of merit. For instance, I used to work under Laura Austin at Blizzard and there was no question that she is three times better than I am, <laughs> you know? And her instructions uh, were incredibly uh, helpful and help me become a better artist. And so I, I think, think it's, oh, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let oh. you, I'll let you change. Um, I just had some questions. So, yeah, go for uh, it. I, I want to agree with you, but also <laughs> sure. gamer gate. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm still actually not sure what all that's about, but oh. I, it's over. They're oh, like it's there. not over. I wish it was. It came it's back. Not. Oh, it, it's still here. 
Like, I think it's kind of dispersed a little bit because of, like, the whole Me Too movement and stuff. But, like, there are people, I think, more more in the fan base than in the actual, like, industry itself that, that don't want us there. Like, and it's still, like, there's a lot of almost hostility that I don't think is intentional, but, like, still kind of rears its head, at least from my experience in the industry. Like, I don't know. It was, it was really well, weird. Like- I can't debate against that specific position, right? Like you're yeah. saying, like people outside, like looking in. That I think that there's, there's a lot of truth to that because I just saw it recently. You know. Well, they have a lot of power, and they demonstrated that fairly recently with the whole like arena net thing. Like, oh, you know, there was like literally a comment on Reddit that like, oh, we can get anyone at arena net fired now. Like, let's roll with it. And I think that's really scary. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, there's a lot of people uh, in the fan base that specifically don't want us there, and and honestly, I felt that at least as a woman in the game industry, like pretty pretty clearly from at least some of the men I work with, mostly management, but not really my coworkers. Yeah. Uh, well, like uh, uh, well, like with the the arena net stuff, you already know my position, so we don't need to get yeah, too into it. Yeah. I, I honestly that. think that he's fired her um, because of how she handled it but i i think you and i agreed that maybe firing wasn't the solution right no i don't think it was a solution but i also yeah. think like just women are held to like ridiculously high standards just because like they're women and i think like i don't know there's just a lot of double standards and like yeah I all think around there's man of, there's a lot awesome super great women in the industry and i can point them out like left and right but like yeah. just just how much harder they've had to work like just in general like it's not to say that like men don't work hard we all work hard like it's just well, that you know we're always kind of on edge because it's so much more yeah, dangerous it, man. <laughs> you know what i'm talking about <clears throat> I'm sorry. Get, but here, here here's the point that i want to make i think it's really yeah. it's really important is that um no no good studio um at least that i've encountered uh, really practices this kind of idea that like you know they they make it harder for for the ladies it just isn't uh, it just isn't accurate you know Spe- uh, specifically in the game industry right like I don't know again the film film is pretty there's there's a lot of examples that it might be exactly what you're saying <laughs> in the film industry like the whole me too movement was pretty much capsizing like a lot of these um, uh, individuals in the film and entertainment industry right like they got mm-hmm. like even louis ck man like what was he up to dude what in the world right showing and, people his dick <laughs> yeah and it's just not and if it is prevalent it needs to surface much much sooner i think right? part of it is that it hasn't really i think we're gonna hear more but like more let, let me put it to you this way like people in the film industry knew does this make sense mm-hmm. like a lot of them knew that like a lot of these people were doing these things they just weren't telling anybody where i don't know anybody i haven't heard uh other than a few stories but again it was outside of the game industry it was actually somewhere in illustration mm-hmm. right and those situations got handled and so i was just like okay but uh i think because in the video game industry and i'm not going to say that this is like particularly um, void meaning that there is no examples let's don't bother look <laughs> right mm-hmm. i think that's stupid like we should obviously be keeping our eye out right yeah definitely um, all the time yeah all the time uh and for harassment of any kind you know and so uh what i'm just saying is i've been in this for quite a while and i've met like literally thousands of artists in our industry and i think if, yeah. if you're if you're trying to like break it in as an artist into any industry i think you, you feel you'll probably feel the safest uh in the video game industry right uh, because there's just a lot of encouragement because even with like all that stuff even though we disagreed at some levels right and there mm-hmm. was a lot of toxic people coming after the the people that were fired from arena Next, there was also a lot of people that came in support you know within the same industry right it was a huge it was a that's the, that was the whole thing that i was talking about earlier yeah uh, i do feel like, like it's changing for the better it's just yeah, thing needs to happen faster. God so for any <laughs> for any of you female listeners who are like wondering if uh, what to think about all this, I would say that if you see any shenanigans, you should always call it out, right? And, Absolutely. And, and, and if 
And if you want to know where is a good place to start working in industry where you can feel safe, I think it generally is the, the, the game industry. Uh, I did talk to one of my female students about this, and she was telling me uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting, uh, which is that it is because there's so many dudes, it does feel weird that it's like a kind of like a boys only club, even if it's not like it's not like guys are trying to make it feel uncomfortable, right? It's just that when you have so many dudes, for instance, like guys typically like to just talk about their privates all the time. <laughs> I know. At work, <laughs> yes. yeah. Can, especially if you're surrounded yep. by other dudes, like why, why not? In an open office plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially it's in- a, It's in, a great time. Yeah, even, <laughs> especially if like you're in an industry where it's like a lot more fluid and a lot more open, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I remember doing that too myself because it's just funny and then you're just hanging out with a bunch of dudes. And it never mm -hmm. crossed my mind that maybe you know, other people feel uncomfortable, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that is a, uh, that is something that I should consider. Like another thing that like uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, like there's, they're lesbians and they were talking about like gay clubs and gay clubs mm -hmm. are pre predominantly dudes. And I was like, oh yeah, that is a thing. Cause I used to go to like the gay clubs all the time with my best friend and like, yeah, it was mostly just dudes. Like it wasn't like gay uh, men clubs, Right, it was just it was just called it was just clubs that allowed anybody in who was anybody, but it was predominantly gay men, and I was just kind of like I didn't think about it, right? I didn't think that mm -hmm. there might be even in, in like this weird kind of um, minority within the gay community, like the subcultures, right? But that's why you got to talk to people, man, instead of just kind of assume stuff. And so uh, I I I think it's really important that there should be dude process too, right? I think people shouldn't just immediately just assume that if someone said something that it may have came off as harassment on both sides of the camp because that is also dangerous, you know? But at the same time, people should take everyone's uh, statements seriously and then, and then follow through so that way there can be a proper, you know, protocol so people can feel safe. They don't feel like scared like my friend gave me a good example again this is not in the game industry this is in a different industry he gave me an example of like one of his employee uh his co-workers she came up to him and said like hey i feel kind of uncomfortable about this around around this guy you know like i feel mm -hmm. like he's kind of checking me out all the time and he's just like he doesn't really listen <laughs> it's kind of weird like i don't know what's going on and he's like all right like thanks for coming to me like this is what you're gonna do you're gonna go to um you're going to go to the HR department. You're going to tell them exactly what you just told me and start putting this, put a paper trail to this, you know? So that yeah. way, if it happens again, we can kind of like, you know, maybe there's something to this because, you know, maybe she just was looking too much into it. Right. But he wasn't, he wasn't going to be like, tell her that he was like, no, let's take this seriously. Okay. So this is what you're going to do. And so she's like, felt like uneasy about it she's like well i don't know i don't want to kind of do that and he's like okay i'll do it for you and i won't even bring up your name don't worry about it you know i'll just say if someone one of the female employees came and i'll just tell you exactly i'll tell them exactly what you told me and that's what he did and they said no we need her to tell us you know and he's like okay that's fine i'll, I'll tell her that this is what you guys are saying and but they like they they gave a lot of assurance that she would be protected you know and so, so she came and she told him everything. And then they're like, okay, yeah, you're not the first, you know? And mm. so now they're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to ask all the female employees here, like indirectly, if there's anything going on, you know, a way to like, see if they would all come up with the same, you know, consensus, you know? And sure enough, yeah. they did almost every single one. And so that one's like clear cut. <laughs> That's clear cut. That guy got fired like right at like around the spot and uh the boss even saw him doing something that was really suspicious and he was like hey what are you doing <laughs> like right when he was doing it and he's like oh no nothing i'm just uh i'm just uh doing a thing you know and he's like yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah like just go back to your desk <laughs> you know <laughs> and, and he's like Jeez. yeah because the boss is like we're not we can't have something like this in here you know and yeah. that person was at a high, like high position, a very valuable asset to the studio. Let go, because who cares, you know? Hey, it's bringing down the rest of the team. Yeah, dude. Uh, you can't make well, your, your employees feel nice. uncomfortable, dude. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Right? Like, and so, 
So people need to know that they should they should be doing this and that there should be safety in in this. You know, they shouldn't yeah, be afraid absolutely. to See go to talk to somebody. Um, yeah. I think though, like, I want to get a little bit more into like how different the fan base is from film, though, because I think that. Like I was saying, the the fan base in the game industry is a lot different. I think they have a lot more, uh, what's the word, like ownership feelings over games. I think it's because games are such a much more direct interactive medium and like they're so much more intrinsically linked to social media. That's um, a bigger time investment. Yeah, that's a bigger topic, but like I, I literally have a pseudonym because of, of fan harassment. So like... That's still a thing. That's still valid, so, and I just want to put that out there. <laughs> so, Olivia, actually, not to, to undermine this point, I think we should. I'm going to stream again. I would yeah. be more than happy to, to start the conversation with that. Yeah, I think right. that's yeah. a good. And then, place and then we can like, get some more insight. <laughs> yeah, because I, I yeah. feel like if we we could go into another hour or two just talking about that, and I, I yeah, don't want to. It's also like 10:30, and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just want to make it clear that that you know that I'm not just trying to say. I don't no, want to hear no, about no. your woman problems. No, I just, no. Uh, of course do. No, and, it's touchy and like I get it. It's so it's so different. Like I, I know nothing of that. I remember I was I talked a little bit about GamerGate with one of my students at one point because I was like oh, yeah, I saw this video and this is what I heard and he was like that's absolutely wrong and I'm like whoa. Oh, I, I, know I would nothing. love to tell you about GamerGate, but yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'll, and I wonder <laughs> what other people's time. thoughts are as well. I have no idea. I have no. No idea what's yeah. going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. So anyway. Unfortunately, uh, my career kind of peaked at the cusp of Gamergate, so that's like, I'm salty about it. <laughs> oh, right. Anyway. Well, well, but, let's talk about it. So yeah. I'll, I'll let you know, too, when there's a day that I want to stream, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a heads up. I know we talked a little bit. I'm going to try to do them in the evening, so that'll be easier yeah. for most people to join in. That'd be awesome. I'm just like planning a wedding and all this other shit so like yeah. everything is crazy right now but it's starting to slow down a little bit <laughs> yeah but with that being said um wait hold on question what do you think is acceptable turnaround time for character concepts we'll end it on this question i'll, I'll answer this <laughs> now someone is asking a question uh oh and someone some other people are asking questions other uh, on the other stuff like art stuff um sorry if i didn't get to your questions it's all right i'll, I'll get to you guys next time and maybe I'll make a, a very clear note that I'll do a stream that's just only Q&A. And then that way we can just answer questions all the whole time. It'll all be on YouTube anyway. <laughs> so that way you can watch it again and again. So anyway, just to answer the last question. And then we're going to say goodnight to everybody. Um, uh, yeah, what do you think is an acceptable turnaround? Well, if you're working on concepts, you usually just got to turn them around pretty quickly. Because you want to make sure that you can get them in front of people and so they can start to kind of figure out whether they can even make the thing within a certain amount of time, right? And if they, if it's a good concept, then they'll, you know, put more money behind it. So the turnarounds usually, uh, it can be easily from like in the same day or like a day. Like you, they say, draw a dinosaur with lasers coming out of his arms. Um, then you have to draw a bunch of dinosaurs with lasers coming out of his arms, like by next by the, the next day uh, sometimes they'll give you like a whole week you know uh, nothing I've never seen like people wait two weeks for like one concept that's a little too long uh, because the whole idea is that we want to get it done fast uh, films pretty quick like it could be like in the same day and illustrations I think are a lot lot longer because that's the final product so they'll give you a lot more time to work on it to make it really cool so that one <laughs> yeah, I don't really know legend splash art yeah, that one, that one, I don't know specifics. I don't do too many illustrations, but I've been given a long time, like sometimes like a month on one illustration hmm. because it's like, yeah, it's like the final, it's like, yeah, like a, it's like going to be really important artwork that's going to be in front of the consumer where not all concept art is going to be in front of the consumers. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, wait, how can you know when you're going to stream? Yeah, I'm going to try to make a, a legit schedule. I know it'll be helpful for a lot of you guys. So that way you guys can kind of prepare your own days. But to say in the evenings for now, uh, I also want to kind of do like lunch streams because that's actually pretty easy for me to do. But I know not everybody will be able to join in on this. So I'll say either in the evenings or during the lunch. So try to be free around those times. All right. Peace out, guys. Hope you guys had a good hangout with us. We got topical, political, 
got real serious, but <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind. This is my channel. Talk about stuff. And so with that, y'all, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.